When I was a kid, lots of my friends loved to dream about what they wanted to be when they were older. Astronauts, rock stars, hitmen. But beyond those, a fair few of them had more realistic ambitions and would often express their desire to be firefighters or police officers. Young boys are attracted to services like that because they're seen as professions where you have to be strong, brave, and where people will look up to you and respect you. Well, not anymore. These days, when young white lads look towards the police force, they'll see an institution that is no longer about serving and protecting the vulnerable, but rather a bureaucratic corpse that is more concerned with parroting empty political platitudes and winning hollow accolades. But most of all, they'll see an establishment that is openly hostile towards them due to their race and gender. This has been proven in the past few days as senior figures within the British police force have called for changes in the law which will allow them to legally discriminate against white men in order to increase the number of ethnic minority recruits. Yes, once again, if you're a straight white man, modern Britain has no use for you anymore. <laughs> Generations of British children have been raised by liars. We were taught by everyone around us, our teachers, our media, our government, our culture, that in Britain, equality under the law was our greatest achievement. We didn't see colour, we didn't see difference. All we saw were individuals who could strive to be whatever they wanted to be in our progressive egalitarian society. We were leading the world into the light and we believed it. But none of this was ever true. It was nothing more than bait on the end of a fishing line. And as soon as the British population went to bite it, we were hooked, trapped, and the state could do with us what it wanted. Now we see the truth. Equality is a lie. Tolerance isn't a virtue. Diversity is not a strength. And all of these things are nothing more than weapons to be used against the native population, or more specifically, white men. We've now reached a point where even our deified equality laws aren't good enough anymore. Not that they ever were, by the way. In 2010, for example, it became legal for employers to reject men in favour of women to increase gender equality in the workplace. Utter nonsense. Now, the next step has been exemplified by Mrs. Sarah Thornton, who is the chair of the National Police Chiefs Council. Seizing her opportunity to be seen as a harbinger of forward thinking and change, she has expressed what she believes to be the next logical move for the British police to encourage that much needed diversity. Police leader calls for laws to allow positive race discrimination. Sarah Thornton says shock to the system needed to increase diversity among officers. Radical new laws should allow police to positively discriminate in favour of minority ethnic recruits. Otherwise, the ranks of officers will be too white for decades to come, the leader of Britain's police chiefs has said. Yes, you heard right. Sarah Thornton, a senior figure in the police, wants to change the law to allow racial discrimination towards white men. <laughs> I guess equality just wasn't good enough, eh? No other racial group in our society would ever be subjected to changes in the law that would allow them to be racially discriminated against. That's a fact, and everyone knows it. The language here sums up the situation perfectly. Otherwise, the ranks of officers will be too white for decades to come. Too white. As if being white is an inherently bad thing. Aren't we in Britain, by the way? Isn't this supposed to be home to native Europeans or white people, to be more specific? Have I got that wrong? How can there be too many white people working in institutions in predominantly white countries? Why is that a problem? I reckon there's too many blacks working in the Nigerian fire brigade. Too many Arabs working in the Saudi coast guard. 
The story continues. Since 1999, police have been trying to get the proportion of officers from ethnic minorities to match the proportion of the populations they serve. But none of the 43 forces in England and Wales has achieved that, and it will be 2052 at the earliest before that happens. It is likely to be even decades beyond that if, as expected, the minority ethnic population grows. Thornton said her personal view was that positive discrimination was needed. That is unlawful at the moment. If you want to do something to give a shock to the system and say we can't wait to 2052, I think we need to do something different. Yeah, Sarah admits that positive discrimination is unlawful at the moment. But whatever, if we really want to bring about change, and change is always a good thing, guys, never forget that. It can never be negative or ill thought out or unwanted. It's always good. We should just scrap the law and make new laws instead, which will make it legally permissible to attack an entire racial group. Brilliant. And also, Maybe the reason why ethnic minorities aren't joining the police in their droves is because, perhaps, they don't want to? Maybe they want to do something else with their lives? Or maybe, and this is controversial, maybe they don't feel that unconditional need to serve and protect the people of this nation as much as native white Brits do, for example. There are exceptions, of course, hashtag not all, but I'm just saying. Is it possible in any way that whites feel more of a responsibility towards serving Britain than second generation Pakistani immigrants? I'm just raising questions here. On top of that, why does every minority group need to be accurately represented within the police to begin with? What's the plan here? Only Muslim officers will work in Muslim areas? Only black officers will work in black areas? Is that the goal? Surely a police officer, no matter his background, should be trained to the same level of ability and competence and have the authority to police any area, right? If that's not the case, surely eyebrows must be raised. Hey, maybe this multiracial, multicultural utopia, where different ethnic groups segregate themselves into slums and effectively colonize parts of Britain, maybe this isn't working out too well. How will this new positive discrimination play out in real life, I wonder? Would they ban whites from applying outright? Or would it be a situation where two candidates are equally qualified, but if one of them is a minority, they'll get the position every time over the white guy, purely because of their ethnicity and the need to diversify the force? Oh wait, here's Sarah again to explain. Thornton said, I think there's an argument that we could select on merit and put people into a pool of recruits and then appoint on representation. Ah, of course. Merit will only get you so far in modern Britain. Then, it's all about your race. If I was in a pool of candidates and saw that a good chunk of them was made up of ethnic minorities, I'd just quit and leave. <laughs> I mean, what would be the point? I'd rather sit inside all day and set up an eBay shop or, hell, sign on the dole. This would be like me advertising for designers for the Iconoclast magazine. Sure, I'd interview everyone based on merit at first, but at the end of the day, I'm only interested in hiring women with big tits. I doubt that'd go down too well. Ever since black teenager Stephen Lawrence was murdered in the early 90s, and criticism was leveled at the police for supposedly having racial bias during the investigation, the British police have been doing everything in their power to prove they aren't racist. It's their greatest mission in life, and to prove they aren't racist, they'll promote racism against white people, as we see here. Yeah, it makes total sense. Image and PR is all that matters now, not fighting crime. West Yorkshire Police last week gladly celebrated their win as Diversity Champions of the Year at the British Muslim Awards. <laughs> yes, congratulations, guys. We'll just forget that you've been proven to have horrendously failed the victims of Muslim child rape gangs in Yorkshire. How you ignored abuse for years, and in other cases, covered it up. Thousands of white girls raped, repeatedly, under your nose, and you did nothing. But enjoy the trophy. It looks nice, it's one of those trendy glass see-through ones, oh, very modern. But uh, I wonder if it's any coincidence at all that you received it at the British Muslim Awards. Hmm, smells a bit fishy in here, doesn't it? Sarah Thornton herself is no stranger to controversy. 
In 2013, she too was accused of failing girl victims of Muslim rape gangs, this time in Oxford. The police didn't take abuse reports seriously, were slow to investigate, and made countless lapses in judgement along the way, allowing countless girls to be raped and enslaved into sex work. Goodness, sounds quite similar to West Yorkshire that, doesn't it? I wonder what their big hold-up was. Sarah Thornton, because she's so full of class, refused to resign from her post, drawing a lot of anger. Now, in 2019, and this is the cherry on top of the cake, she's about to be appointed Theresa May's anti-slavery commissioner, which is both hilarious and insulting at the same time. Yes, the woman who oversaw gigantic failures in preventing the sex slavery of children by Muslim gangs is now set to be made the anti-slavery commissioner to the government. Just outstanding. Can we get a round of applause for this, everyone? Now that's what I call a home run. In conclusion, the British police are more concerned with plaudits and bullshit diversity awards than they are fighting crime. Now, if people like Sarah Thornton get their way, they will lobby to change the law to make it easier for them to continue down this destructive path. They are not on our side. They've betrayed the public, and soon they could have further power to openly discriminate towards white people in their dogmatic pursuit of equality and diversity. Every individual in significant positions of power within these organisations need to be done away with. The entire structure needs to be brought down and rebuilt. They have failed the British people for too long. Thank you all so much for watching once again. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so in a couple of ways. The first is via PayPal, link is down below. Or you can join the SS and sign up for my Subscribestar page. $5 a month or more will get your name at the end of every single one of my videos, like these beauties right here. Thank you all so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Okay, I'll see you later in the week. Have a good one. Bye-bye.